Since Disney rebooted the Star Wars universe, we've had little information on what Obi-Wan Kenobi was up to during his exile on Tatooine. Until recently, when we got two stories from the comics. So what do we know from the 40-ish pages of story that we've gotten about his time on the planet? Well, one, it's depressing. When Obi-Wan first came to Tantooine and gave the baby Luke to the Lars family to watch over, he thought he'd be busier than ever. Watching over the kid, protecting him, and when he was a little older, training him to become a Jedi. Fate, and mostly Owen, had other plans. Owen would refuse to allow Obi-Wan to train Luke, fearing that the man was dangerous, and at one point he would straight up say to Obi-Wan Kenobi, haven't you killed enough Skywalkers already? So Owen is very clear, stay away from the boy and stay away from my family, but despite those warnings and not being invited to train Luke, Obi-Wan still looks after Luke and their homestead, and for kilometers around, the Lars homestead is the only one that's never been attacked by sand people or had Jabba's thugs collect taxes. However, despite looking out for their family, Obi-Wan began to feel lost on the planet. He wasn't General Kenobi anymore. He was no longer a Jedi Master. He was only Ben. Quiet Ben who lived far out in the Dune Sea. Ben the Forgotten Hermit. Ben the Relic. Instead of Sith Lords and Bounty Hunters, his days were spent battling inactivity. His days blurred together. He would go years without touching his lightsaber. Sometimes he'd eat snake every day for a year. And things wouldn't really begin to change for Obi-Wan until about eight years into his exile when there was a terrible drought on the planet. And the moisture farmers would be hit very hard. They wouldn't be able to get enough water to not only pay Jabba the Hutt's terrible water tax, but also have enough to barter for food and other supplies they needed. So Obi-Wan would be watching these moisture farmers being exploited by Jabba the Hutt and his thugs with their terrible water tax, not have enough money for food, they were starving, they were dying of dehydration, it was terrible, and it was just killing Obi-Wan knowing that he couldn't do anything to help these people. He had to remain incognito, he had to disguise that he was a Jedi. But that doesn't mean Obi-Wan would like ignoring the misery of others. He would call out to his master, asking for guidance, knowing that there had to be a lesson in all this. But he would also despair, calling out to his master, You never trained me for this, Master Qui-Gon. You never taught me how to fade away. As hard as it was to become a Jedi, it was harder for Obi-Wan to not be one. And he would continue kind of just having a blind eye to everything that was going on until one day in town at the market, he would see Jabba's thugs try to fire on a group of moisture farmers, and Obi-Wan would cause all their guns to misfire at once, saving the people from the thugs. And from that point, he decided that maybe he shouldn't be going into town anymore because he can't stop his instincts to be a Jedi and help people. But the Force works in mysterious ways, and one night Ben would sense something. Luke was in danger. It turns out Luke took it upon himself to steal water from the thug speeder to give back to the moisture farmers. The thugs had caught him and decided they were going to sell him into slavery. Obi-Wan, not wanting to fail at his only job, appears, knocks out all their lights, and takes them out one by one. Afterwards, he brings a knocked out Luke back home. A week later, the drought would end and Kenobi would declare, My name is Obi-Wan Kenobi, the last of my order, but this is not the end of the Jedi. All it took was a young boy's courage to assure me of that. Let us hope that someday soon, I can tell that boy the story. From there, Obi-Wan would start a journal writing all these experiences and stories in to one day give to Luke. And Luke would actually get this journal after A New Hope when he travels to Tantooine and goes to Ben's old house. And after getting into a fight with Boba Fett, would find the journal and begin reading the stories. The second story, so the next time we hear about Obi-Wan, is a year after the drought, so nine years into Obi-Wan's exile. And he no longer goes into town. He realizes that he needs to keep a low profile, he can't go into town anymore, especially with him doing little things to help people out, and especially now that Jabba has hired people to try to figure out who ended up getting the drop on his thugs and beating them up. Obi-Wan continues to watch over Luke, but still isn't allowed to train him. Ben would notice Luke pilot a ship, impressing his friends, 
and he would remember that Anakin had been the most daring pilot he had ever seen, even as a boy. He wonders if Anakin's boy could be just as strong in the Force. Which worries Kenobi. Through watching over Luke, he discovers just how much Luke is like his father. But despite this worry, he still encourages Luke from afar, telling him, Feel the Force, Luke. Feel it flowing through you, if you can. But it seems Luke isn't quite on his father's level yet, as Obi-Wan sees him clip the edge of a canyon and ruin his ship. Ben would follow Luke home to a very pissed off Owen, who would tell him, As long as I live, you will never fly again. Yikes. But Obi-Wan has other plans, and since he can't go into town anymore, he ends up making other arrangements. Obi-Wan instead goes to the Jawas, who have been the victim of raids of late. Obi-Wan exchanges his service of protecting them for parts. While waiting for the raiders, Obi-Wan would express his hope for Luke, talking out loud to his master, There's still hope, master. You thought Anakin was the chosen one. Perhaps in a way, he was. If his son shows the same abilities, then just maybe. That night, he would take care of the raiders, and he'd also reflect being a hired bodyguard wasn't the worst job he's ever had. Though the Clone Wars seems so very long ago and very far away. And his war had ended, and badly. But his fight carried on. He would succeed in scaring off the raiders without a lightsaber, but he would get a kink in his back from it and think that he shouldn't be doing stuff like this. His job was simply to protect the boy and keep him hidden. But Obi-Wan also acknowledges his own mortality. He wouldn't be around for 800 years. At one point, Luke would be on his own. And something told Kenobi that on that day, Luke would need to know how to fly. Despite all his doubts on whether he should be doing this or not, he thinks it's worth it because for one more day, he gets to feel like a Jedi. He just hopes that in the entire galaxy, he's not the only one that feels that way. The next day in town, the Jawas would give Luke the parts to fix his ship that Obi-Wan paid for while protecting them from the raiders. Luke would think it was Uncle Owen that bought them and Obi-Wan would smile at Luke's excitement. But Owen would show up at Obi-Wan's door that night and dump the parts all over his floor, telling him to stay the hell away from his family, and he knows exactly what Obi-Wan is doing. Just stop. Obi-Wan tells Owen that he respects his decision not to have him train Luke, and Owen just doesn't care, and he just says, you know, keep your trouble to yourself. And he ends up leaving, and Kenobi acknowledges that, yeah, trouble has a way of finding him, even on a desert planet, but there's also something he's really good at, and that's not dying, at least for now. But he promises as long as he lives, Luke will never find trouble. Meanwhile, Jabba has paid for a new fierce bounty hunter to find the man that ambushed his tax collectors. So that is it so far of what we know about Obi-Wan's time on Tatooine. I think in another six months we're going to get an update and a new story about what he's up to, which is super exciting. So in six months, hopefully you'll see an update video about what Obi-Wan was up to during his exile. Besides that, make sure you come back every week for Star Wars videos, Game of Thrones history, comic videos, and more.